Hello everybody, welcome to Wednesday. Today is April the 15th. I hope you're able to join me today and if you're watching on the replay, hello. Today we are sewing together the slanted diamonds quilt block. This is going to be a six inch quilt block. Hello everybody, hello. Let me see if I can pull up this video. Hopefully the live chat will be working and we can chit chat. I have four questions lined up for today. Actually, one, two, three, and then some this or that questions. A couple of those. Hope you're doing fantastic today. Thank you so much, Ms. Chantel, for moderating the chat. Thank you so much. Yes, slanted diamonds. We're doing a bunch of half square triangles today. We're coming on a little bit later. Harlan just finished up his work meeting. And so now we can take our time and sew together this block. Yes, and make sure uh, to stick around to the end of this video. I'm going to be showing you tomorrow's block. Today makes the 23rd quilt block. 23 days live in a row. <laughs> I have enjoyed seeing all of your quilt blocks. Yes, I have. You're doing so good. Of course, I don't know if you can hear that, but of course the, tra the big trash truck is going to come right through our street. Hopefully that's not making too much noise. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. So yeah, I'll be showing tomorrow's block at the end of today's video. One thing I did want to start with today. Uh, I go through and read the live chat at night. And I have so much fun doing that. And I also read each and every comment that is ever, ever posted on any of my videos. Well, yesterday... Um, a, a question popped up and I did not know the answer to it. I don't know all the answers all the time. But one thing about this platform and doing what I do is I can pose this question to all of you and maybe you know the answer to this question and you can help this viewer. So I'm going to pull that question up on the screen. It is from Miss Patricia and she has a question. So if you know the answers to this, it would be great if you shared your knowledge and information. She asked, uh, I've heard friends speaking of getting glue on their needles no matter what brand or how light the stabilizer is. Is there something out there where it won't do that to your needle? I think during uh, a live or during a Zoom, we were talking about something that lubricates your ne your needle, but I don't remember exactly what that was. And I've never experienced issue with getting glue on my needle. So I don't know. But maybe if any of you have the answers to this question and you could share your information, that would be great. Diane Roberts, how about a beginner's block? Uh, I'm trying to think. A beginner's block. I'll write that down. Today's block is not that terribly difficult. Uh, but if you're not someone who likes half square triangles, maybe making your half square triangles in a different way. Like I've shown a couple of different ways to make half square triangles that are really easy, like making four at a time and then cutting them apart. But I will write down a beginner's block. Just letting you know, I have nine more quilt blocks already lined up <laughs> and all of the work done for those. But I will put that on the list. Miss Betty in Newport News. Yay. Mimsy says there are non-stick needles. Thank you, Miss Mimsy. I've never had an issue with the glue from any type of fusibles or stabilizers gumming up my needle. But that's just me. We're, we all experience different things, right? Ah, Susan says you can use a silicone spray. 
rail fence. I'll write that down. Teflon coated needles. Diana says, I use a little oil on my needle and it helps a lot. Oh, Robin says, I wonder if it gets stickier as the interfacing ages. I've never had that problem until I received a partial bolt from a friend in Texas. It really gums up my needle now. That, you might have a point there, Miss Robin. You might have a point. I don't know. None of my, <laughs> all of my interfacings and all of my fusibles... They don't really stick around long enough for me to find out if age has anything to do with it. All right, so today, thank you all so much for sharing all of your knowledge. And I hope, Miss Patricia, that you catch this video and that you're able to take away some information that is helpful for you. Will I be doing a paper piece to block? How do you all feel about that? If I did a paper piece to block, let me write that down so I don't forget. If I did a paper piece to block, I would need to share um, the pattern so that we're all working with the same pattern. And I would be sharing it on the Creative Crew group or in a link for Dropbox in the description box. I can certainly do that. How easy it was it for everyone to access the bunny rabbit template that we used on Easter? Because that's the same method that I would have to share the paper piece pattern so that we're all doing the same thing. Thank y'all all so much for helping with that question. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So I have on my screen, let me switch over and don't forget, I'm going to be sharing today's block and I have a really cute idea with what you can do with tomorrow's block as soon as we're done with this one. Here on the table, you'll see all of my pieces. I have used the same colors, the same colorway as the example picture that I showed of this block. So we have red, pink, blue, and white. I think it's going to be pretty. You'll notice all of these blocks are cut the exact same way, 2 and 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths. If you want to make your half square triangles bigger and then trim them down, you'll be trimming your half square triangles to 2 and a half by 2 and a half. Okay, I know there's some, some of my friends out there who absolutely do not like cutting the 7 eighth measurements. They make their half square triangles bigger and then they trim them down and square them up. If you're doing it like that, trim your half square triangles to two and a half by two and a half. Hello, everybody. So great to see you. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and get started. The very first thing we're going to do for today's block is we're going to cut all of these blocks right in half on the diagonal. Okay, so we have three red ones, three red, two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. I'm going to layer them up all on top of each other and line those up to a line on my mat, just like that. We have two pink ones. We have two blue ones, and I'm going to cut these, and then we'll cut the white ones in just a second. Oh, Miss Lynn, paper piecing. I was scared of it, too, when I first started doing it, but I have some ways of making it super simple, and you don't have to sew through the paper at all. There's no ripping off paper when you're done, and you can reuse the paper piecing template over and over and over again. So yeah, that would be fun if we do a block that is paper pieced. I'm going to go ahead and cut all of these blocks one time. 
right through the middle, just like that. I put a new blade in my cutter. Yes, I did. I had to. I was cutting out t-shirt blocks this morning. <laughs> For the white blocks, you should have three that are two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. We're gonna line those up on the mat. We're gonna cut these and then I'm gonna ask the first question of the day. So there we go. Our first question of the day. When you were younger, who was your famous crush? Probably wasn't just me when I was growing up. I had a huge crush on time, Tom Cruise. I was a teenager when the movie Top Gun came out. I bet you I watched that movie every day for the entire summer. <laughs> every single day. Tom Cruise. I had a huge crush on time, Tom Cruise. And this question actually was suggested by Harlan. I was asking him, I, was, I, I said, I'm having a hard time coming up with questions. What's a question I could ask during the live? And he said, well, ask them who their crush was when they were younger. So when you were growing up, who did you have a great big crush on? Yay, you're going to try the paper piecing. Yes. Diana, I have some videos already on my channel that you could watch today that shows you how to do that. But we'll do a block that is paper pieced together if you want. Oh no, Beverly, you found a mistake in three of your blocks. That's all right, a couple of my blocks have mistakes in them. I'm just going to leave them. <laughs> They're staying like that. Who was your big crush growing up? Now that we have all of our blocks cut in half, we're going to have a couple of extras, y'all. Okay? I'm going to pull over all of my blocks, and I'm going to show you the colors that we're actually going to have a couple of extras that we don't need. Okay? Of the blue, we only need three triangles. So you're going to have one extra that you need to pull out. Okay, put him off to the side for the next block. And of the pink, <clears throat> pardon me, the pink, again, we're only using three of those triangles and we're going to have one extra left over. So put this one over to the side for the next block. All of the white and all of the red we are using. And I'm going to give you a second to catch up going to take a sip of water because I'm about to lose my voice. I have so much fun reading the answers to your questions. <laughs> I do. I sit at night and watch, go through and read all of them. Tom Cruise was my great big crush at the time. What age do you think is too old to start quilting? I don't think you're ever too old to start something new. Right, Diane? I think uh, as long as you have the will and desire to learn something new, then by all means, dive right in. Pick it up. With all of the technology and with YouTube, thousands and thousands of tutorials at your fingertips. If you want to learn anything, there's all kinds of ways that you can make that possible. So with our extras off to the side, let me bring over this iron. and Get that heating up because it's been asleep for quite a while. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start laying out this block. So let's just move all these little triangles off to the side. 
I'm hoping that I can lay this block. It's upside down to me, but I'm hoping that it's right side up to you, right? And uh, together we can lay this block out. So we're going to take our three pink triangles and start with those. Just like this. We're going to take three red ones. And fill them in just like this. That's pretty already. That is pretty already. And then we're going to take our other three red triangles and lay them just like this. I think this block is going to come together pretty quickly, y'all. Then we're going to take our white ones just like this. And I forgot to show you in the beginning of this video, a preview of what this quilt looks like. I showed it yesterday, so you might remember from yesterday. Just like that. We're gonna take our other three white triangles, just like this. And this. And that. And then we have three blue triangles. And this is the layout for our block today. I'm gonna leave that on the screen for a second so you can get your pieces laid out if you're sewing with me live. Yes, I love it that y'all uh, have conversation in the chat. That makes me so happy. That's what we're doing these videos for, right? Have a little social hour with our friends and family. So while you're getting all of your pieces laid out just like this, I'm going to go ahead and ask question number two, because I have a feeling today's video is going to go by pretty quickly. What is your favorite vegetable? your most favorite vegetable. And on a second part two of this question is what is a vegetable that you absolutely do not like and will refuse to eat? Your most favorite and your least favorite vegetable. I'd have a hard time picking a favorite vegetable. I love lots and lots of vegetables. I love veggies. What would it look like with the dark blue also where the pink is? That's a good question. I wish I had more blue triangles so that I could demonstrate what that would look like, but we'll lay this one extra out just like that. And maybe you can kind of visualize what that would look like. Actually, I think that would be pretty stunning if you can picture that and then that this block repeated as a quilt i think that would be pretty stunning right yes feel free to um take the creative liberties to do whatever colors that you want i just choose colors and we just go with that <laughs> feel free to substitute the pink with the blue if you wanted to do that. I think that would be actually quite stunning. So if you just joined us, we're on question number two. What is your favorite vegetable and what is your least favorite vegetable that you refuse to eat? I have my sewing machine set up with a quarter inch seam allowance. If you're sewing with me live, make sure you switch your needle over to a quarter of an inch and we're going to go ahead and start sewing these pieces together. Now I'm going to do some chain piecing. Y'all know me. I have my marker and we're going to chain piece all of these half square triangles all at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to flip the pink one right on top of the red. 
just like this. I'm going to flip the red one right on top of the white triangle, just like this. And I'm going to flip the white triangle right onto the blue one. Now we are sewing this seam right where these two triangles meet in the middle. And I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to mark that so I don't accidentally flip them the wrong way at the sewing machine. Then I'm going to start bringing all of these over and I'm going to sew them all with a quarter inch seam allowance. So great to see everybody today. We're a little bit later today because Harlan had a work meeting. I don't know why my chair is all in the wrong place. There we go. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and start sewing all of these half square triangles. Linda, uh, if you are using a thread that is a little bit thicker or your fabrics are really thick and firm, <laughs> Uh, you might want to sew these with a scant quarter inch. I'm using more of an exact quarter of an inch. But yeah, if your thread is a little bit on the thicker side, you might want to scooch over a tiny little bit to keep it. When you're done with these half square triangles, they should measure two and a half by two and a half. So there's our first one. It's lovely to see you too, Miss Hazel. How are you doing? There's our second. You'll see these start disappearing off of my table as I bring them over. You can throw a pin in here if you want to. I'm just holding them in place. Coming right along, we're about halfway done. Oh goodness, I'm glad you're starting to feel a little bit better, Miss Hazel. Now is no time to be getting sick, right? And now we're on this last group of three. Let's see, favorite veggies for me. Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, squash, corn, green beans, butter beans. Those are the ones right off the top of my head. Zucchini. <laughs> Cucumbers. Tomatoes. <laughs> I'd say the vegetables that I don't like would be, what's the one that gets slimy when you cut it? People like to fry it a lot. What is that? I forget. Thank you, Miss Maureen. Yep, I'm just taking my time. I do more talking than anything else.
All right, we have one more set of triangles. All right, now we have a big long string. A big long string of triangles. Just like this. Oh, I am not a huge fan of eggplant either, but that's not the okra. Yes, okra. That's probably my least favorite. I don't like eggplant too much either, though. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and snip all of these apart. Snip. Snip, snip, snip. And then I'm going to trim off these little dog ears before I press. Just like this. My next question is a would you rather, and I've read... All of our answers from previous lives, I know many of you do not watch very much television. And then you have, <laughs> you have viewers like me who I like watching series like on Netflix and stuff like that. Our third question is a would you rather, would you rather watch Netflix or YouTube? If you had some free time. And you just felt like some mindless watching TV or watching uh, a show or tutorials. Would you rather watch a series on Netflix or a series on YouTube? I'm about 50-50 on that one. There's several series on Netflix that I've enjoyed watching. But then uh, a lot of the times Harlan will be watching something on Netflix and I'll be sitting next to him on my phone watching something on YouTube. <laughs> Netflix or YouTube? All right, Iron, it's time to go to work for you. I've trimmed all the dog ears off of my half square triangles, and I'm going to give them all a press. I'm pressing mine to the darker side, but you are more than free and open to press these seams open if you would like to. And I'll start bringing them over. Once I get them all pressed, then we'll rearrange this block back out the right way. Those are pretty little half square triangles. Pretty, pretty, pretty. If you've made bigger half square triangles and you want to trim them down, they need to measure two and a half by two and a half. If you're making the six inch block, I know some of my friends are making this into a 12 inch block, so their half square triangles need to be much bigger. <laughs> And we've got two more.
Miss Wanda, I used to trim my dog ears off after I pressed uh, my blocks open. But sometimes I have shaky hands, y'all. I have uh, essential tremors. And so um, when I would press my blocks open and then trim my dog ears off, every once in a while, my trimmers would take over and I would snip an edge of my block. So for me, it's easier just to trim them off before I press open, but that's just me. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and relay out this block and then give you a second to catch up if you're sewing with me live. The pinks go down here, just like this. And then the red on top of that with the white. And then the white with the blue. And we're coming right along. This is just like putting together a nine patch at this point. Robin has a question. Let me scroll up through. Oh, so Robin does not have a question. Okay. <laughs> I was scrolling through to see a question from Robin, but I wasn't seeing one. It might have been my iron making some gurgling noises. It needs more water. I put water in my iron because I'm a steam, I'm a steam kind of person. It was probably my iron, y'all. So I'm going to give y'all a second to catch up. Mmm. Who's snoring? <laughs> no, that was my iron. So as we start sewing these together, I have just a few little questions. They're like this or that questions. This or that. Would you rather have a big party or a small gathering? A big party or a small gathering? At this point, sewing together the nine patch, we would all do it different ways. There's no right way and no wrong way. What I will do is I will place the first or all of the blocks in the second row, I'm going to turn right over onto the first row. And I'm going to sew together all of these with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then without breaking thread and without ironing, I'm going to bring over each one of these. Okay, that's how I'm going to assemble my rows. I'm a small gathering kind of person too. I would much rather have a small gathering than a big party. <laughs> Keeping that quarter inch seam allowance, we're just going to sew each one of these. Looks unanimous. Small gathering. All right, I'm gonna go right back up to the top. I'm not gonna break my thread on these. I'm gonna open up this first row, finger press that down, and bring in this last. I think it's freezing because of this third webcam. 
it has a different connection than, than my other webcams and I think it's slowing down my video and causing it to break up some. I think that's what that is. I'm going to start bringing in this third block. We're going to open up row number two and finger press that flat and bring in this third one. Thank you so much. Miss Namitu, thank you so much. I like to double check to make sure they're all going in the same direction. And then flip it and sew it. And then we'll open up this last row. Finger press it open and bring in this last block. Make sure they're all going in the right direction. Flip it and sew it. Thank you. Yeah, the t-shirt quilt behind me has taken over my design wall <laughs> for a day or two. I'm going to snip these threads that hold these rows together. Just like that. And here's our rows. I'm going to give these a press. Yeah, Miss Wanda, this block is a lot of fun to make. It's all just half square triangles. There's our first row. Our second row. And the third row is coming right up. Just like that. Now here's another one. Miss Me Too, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Here's another question. What's worse, laundry or dishes? What's worse, laundry or dishes? I say laundry. I'd rather do dishes than laundry. I don't know why. <laughs> laundry is not that hard. You throw it in a machine and you walk away. I'd rather do dishes. Now that we have these three rows pieced together, we're going to flip the second one right on top of the bottom one and sew that seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. Laundry or dishes, what is worse? I'm going to match up these little seams as I work my way from one side to the other. And while we're right here at the sewing machine, I'm just going to open this up, do a little finger pressing, flatten it out some, and I'm going to bring over this last row and add it right to the bottom. Check it, flip it, and sew it. <laughs> Match up these little seams from one edge to the other. Okay. 
And just like that, we have done the slanted diamonds block. Now I'm going to give this a press and then we'll reveal what mine looks like. Pressing, pressing, pressing. I think a quilt made with this block repeated would be amazing. If you missed that yesterday, I'm going to show it to you here up on the screen. There we go. Let me bring in this yellow board. Because maybe it'll show up a little bit better. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I need to square mine up a little bit, but I'll probably just leave it just like that. Our last little question for the day, sneakers or sandals? Sneakers or sandals? I'm a flip-flop person. So I would say flip-flops versus sandals, but sneakers or sandals? Yes, I like this little block a lot. And that went together pretty fast, right? I imagine if you had a whole bunch of half squared triangles lined up and ready to go, and you just spent some time at the sewing machine, chain, sti chain stitching all of the triangles together, then the blocks would come together pretty quickly, right? I think that's pretty. Oh, it does. It looks like a wavy flag. You're right. <clears throat> Flip flops. Yes. Oh, we have quite a few sneakers in there, too, though. Nita says, neither. She'd rather go barefoot or with house slippers or Crocs or sliders. Oh, I cannot wait till tonight to go through and read all of your answers. So here's our finished slanted diamonds quilt block. I think that was a lot of fun. Y'all, I try to be as biased as I can when I, when I think about how much sewing and quilting experience that I have. And trying to think as someone difficult. So if you're wanting to stretch your skills a little bit, and you can sew with a pretty accurate quarter inch seam allowance, then you might want to try this block. Because on a scale of one to 10, and I'm trying to be as really biased and fair thinking about this, on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the most difficult, this block for me, I would say is like a two or a three. But that could just be me. If you're an extremely new beginner, I would urge you to give this block a try. One thing for sure is we're finding out a lot of the traditional quilt blocks, a lot of them use the half square triangles to make up the different shapes of the block. So I hope you give this block a try. Now, I forgot to show you in case you missed it yesterday, what this block would look like repeated as a quilt going to show you that here on the screen. I think that's pretty fantastic, right? If you did this as a quilt of valor, or if you changed the colors all together, it would be fantastic.
Lisa, that is a great question. Yeah, you could do half square triangles in so many different ways. Yes, you can sew two strips together and then uh, cut your half square triangles out of two strips of fabric that are sewn together. There are videos on YouTube showing you how to do that. Pamela, I'm willing to bet that you could probably do a sunburst type of quilt with this quilt block. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> yes, Miss Vicky, the leaders and enders help my sewing machine. I am a lot less frustrated when sewing when I use a leader and an ender. Yes, it is good practice. These blocks are really great practice for cutting that 7 8 measurement and for sewing with that measurement too. Yes, ombre fabric would look amazing with this design, right? Yes, it would. Yes, it would. So I'll be adding this block to all of the blocks that we've done before it. This is our 23rd quilt block. Now let me show you what I have lined up for tomorrow. Yes, I have a Juki. I sure do. I have the Juki HZL F600. Uh, my machine that I was using before was a Singer Patchwork. I love that machine, it's a workhorse. But I wanted a machine with a little bit of a bigger throat space. I wanted a machine that I could lower my feed dogs. Um, I really like this machine because it has a dial on the back that I can lower the press pressure of the presser foot. I do lots and lots of t-shirt quilts and it comes in so handy if I can lower the press pressure of the presser foot when sewing together t-shirt quilt blocks. I also thought that I would love the knee lift, but I've only used it a few times. But so, those are some of the reasons why I picked the Juki. Plus, I watch tons and tons of reviews on this machine. Robin has this machine. Uh, one of the things that I loved about this machine is it sews through multiple thick layers like denim. And denim is one of my preferred materials to add to my quilts. And I do lots of memory type of quilts, cutting apart blue jeans and adding them into my quilts. And uh, yeah, you can sew through multiple layers of denim with no problem with this machine. And so that's why I picked this one. <laughs> You're so welcome. Susan, you, you use your knee lift all the time. I had a hard time moving the knee because I'm so used to lifting with my finger. I was still lifting with my finger and doing my knee. <laughs> but then since we moved, this sewing machine is on a table that is really too high for the knee lift anyway. So, <laughs> so let me bring over and show you the block we're doing tomorrow. Tomorrow's quilt block is going to be another six inch quilt block. It's called Lone Pine Tree. And I'm going to leave this up on the screen for a few minutes so that if you want to sew this block with me live tomorrow, you have a chance to write down what you need to get lined up for tomorrow's live. The Lone Pine Tree. Looks pretty simple, right? Not tons and tons of pieces in this quilt block tomorrow. And I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So with this series, with each one of the blocks during the video, I like to show you a little mock-up example of what the quilt block might look like if you just made that one block and repeated it several times. With the Lone Tree block. I did that and it just looked like a forest. <laughs> it was just a pine tree forest quilt, which if you like pine trees, 
then you might have thought that that was really cute. So I was looking at it and I was like, well, it just looks like a pine tree forest. But I wonder what would happen. You know, we've often talked about um, doing row by row quilts. Thank you, Miss Hazel. The name of my machine is a Juki H, whoops, <laughs> HZLF600. There's several different models. There's a F300. There's a F600. I think there's a 900 or something like that. I have the F600. So we've talked many times. Thank you, Miss Hazel. You're so sweet about doing row by row quilts. So that's what I did with the mock-up for today, which is kind of exciting. I took three house blocks. The house block, let me get my notebook. Let's take a look. The house block was a 10 inch quilt block. So I took three house blocks and put them side by side. And then I took five pine tree blocks because those are six inches, right? And put them in between rows of the house block. And now you have a little neighborhood quilt, right? A little neighborhood quilt. That's okay, Miss Elizabeth. I don't mind repeating. If y'all have questions, now is the perfect time to ask them. I probably wouldn't repeat a yellow house over and over again. <laughs> I would probably change the color of my houses, but that's just me. You could do all yellow houses if you wanted. But how cute is that, right? As a row by row quilt, pine trees and houses, pine trees and houses. I think that would be pretty adorable, right? I think that would be pretty adorable. So this is what we're making tomorrow. Ooh, yes, you could make this into a Christmas quilt, Miss Celeste. You could do that. That would be adorable, yes. You could put little reefs on the door, some little Christmas lights on the house. Decorate the trees with ornaments. Yes, you could make it seasonal. Yes, with uh, snow, autumn trees. Y'all have such great ideas. <clears throat> such great ideas. A row of picket fences. Um... You know, I should have pre-planned all these blocks a little bit more. The picket fence block we did, I lined it up in the mock-up, and the picket fence is just so big, that block. It just sort of looked unproportionate <laughs> to the other blocks. But if you made a smaller picket fences and did a row of those, that would look adorable. Yes, the lone pine tree. I think that would be really cute. I like the idea of changing the seasons. I like that a lot. Are oh, you like my surf, my Smurf glass today? It is the handy Smurf glass. You're so right, Miss Wanda. It wakes up your imagination, gets you thinking, spark that creativity. Uh, so nut five. I use Inkscape. Inkscape is a free vectorizing software on the internet. You can Google it. I have some Inkscape tutorials here on my channel if you want to check them out to see what it's all about. But that's how I design my quilts. Mary, I think you have a good 
point with the pine trees. I don't think they do change colors with the season. <laughs> I noticed that this winter, but you could call it something else, right? You could call it something else. It doesn't have to be a pine tree. Yes, I love my Smurf glasses. I collect them. Whenever I go to the thrift stores or the antique shops, I'm always looking for fun ones. So, y'all, I think that's everything for today. Do y'all have any questions before I go? I look forward to putting this cute little quilt block up on the wall with all my other ones on the side for right now. <laughs> Once this t-shirt quilt comes off the wall, I think I will be arranging my blocks in a layout that uh, would probably look good as a quilt. We'll see. Ooh, Lulu, I like that idea too. I want to thank you all so much for spending time with me on your Wednesday. I appreciate that so much. I look forward to the time we get to spend together each day. Uh, yes, tomorrow makes 24 blocks. Y'all could probably, with the blocks we've already made, put together a pretty fantastic quilt. Or several, several smaller projects at this point, right? I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to make a bigger quilt. Wanda, um, I have tons and tons of videos on my channel about uh, printing photos for quilts. Every printer is different, my dear. Um, you want a permanent ink, and it might be that your printer doesn't make permanent inks. All the printers are different. All the inks are different. Laser printers are different than inkjet printers. <laughs> You're going to have to do some experimenting. And I say that so many times in my videos, but you really have to do your own experimenting with the inks that are in your printer. There are different products out there that if you print your photos on fabric, even after heat setting, the inks wash out. There are products like Retain and Bubble Jet that you can use that will heat set the, or set those inks permanently. Some people have had great results using vinegar a vinegar bath and that might be enough to set your inks all the inks are so much different but uh, you can also google permanent ink for your printer and see if they make some that are permanent once they're heat set it's so hard to keep up with technology and to know all the different printers and inks that are out there and that's always changing too right but um There, I do know that you can get some sublimation ink. You either need a sublimation printer or a printer that you can convert into a sublimation printer and a heat press. That's something to do some research on as well. Oh, hold on one second. Blue, blue, blue. Nope, I'm not missing any blue. We're going to be cutting one of those blue pieces apart tomorrow. <laughs> Miss Dort, if you are looking at the picture of the pine tree, you see four individual pieces of blue fabric around the pine tree that is because you're going to take the one three eighths by three eighths and we're going to cut that into triangles that's going to give you two triangles from one piece of fabric so the one piece will then turn into two that'll give you four blue pieces of fabric for tomorrow's block but I want to double check is that that's what you're talking about right 
tomorrow, Miss Susan, we will be a little bit earlier unless they pop up a meeting at Harlan's work. <laughs> Wanda, do some research on the Google, okay? And uh, type in the Google research uh, best printers for printing on fabric and see what comes up. Diana, tomorrow will be um, a little bit earlier. We'll go back to like 12, 12-ish 12 my time, Eastern Standard Time, unless there's a meeting with him. And then I have to work around it. Okay, yes, that's what you were talking about. Yes. Then the measurements and the piece count is right. Tomorrow we're going to be cutting what that one three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths into two pieces. That'll give us four blue pieces of fabric to work with to make this block. I want to thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. Can't wait to see the pictures of your block. And I will see you all tomorrow. Let's see, where are we? Here we go. All right. Have a great evening, everybody. Do something fun. Do something for yourself. Get some rest. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.